All right. So good day, guys. So once again, I will be your online learning coordinator for this subject, social issues and professional practice. And for today, we will discuss the module four, uh, which is, of course, um, the content of the discussion will be privacy in the cyberspace. So to start with, let us talk about the learning outcomes for this module. So basically, you are expected to determine the differences between cyber technology and cyber ethics, understand the meaning of privacy, enumerate and determine the differences of each type of privacy, enumerate and determine the differences as well of each attribute of privacy, understand the different privacy concerns related in cyber technology, and different privacy violations. Okay, so these are the uh, topics that we have to uncover in order for us to understand privacy. So these are cyber ethics versus cyber, uh, cyber technology, categories of privacy, types of privacy, three attributes of privacy, privacy concerns, violations and legal implications and of course data and web mining okay so let's define cyber ethics and cyber technology in in order for us to understand the main difference or the differences between the two of them so when we talk about cyber ethics we are referring to or it can be defined as the study of moral legal and social issues involve, involving cyber technology and evaluates the social policies and laws that have been framed in response to issues generated by its development and use. On the other hand, cyber technology refers to a wide, uh, to a wide range of computing and communication devices from standalone uh, computers to connected or networked computing and communication technologies. So basically guys, when we talk about cyber ethics, we are uh, also talking about the rules and regulations whenever we enter the cyberspace, wherein the cyber technology refers to different devices or any technology that we are using in order for us to enter uh, the cyberspace. All right. So those are the main differences between cyber ethics and cyber technology. So privacy, uh, we do have two categories of it. So the first category includes rights that an individual can use to fence off personal information seekers, namely solitude, anonymity, and intimacy. So uh, the second category, on the other hand, contains those rights an individual can use to control the amount and value of personal information given out. So when we talk about that, we are talking about uh, the process of reserving any pieces of information. So basically, if we are, let's say, uh, if we are to develop a specific technology in the cyberspace, we have to make sure that we don't violate the privacy and follow or understand these two categories that we've mentioned. And we also have the um, one of the types of privacy, which is personal privacy. So when we talk about personal privacy, this is referring to the right to privacy of all personal attributes would mean the prevention of anyone or anything that would intrude or violate that personal space where those attributes are. So personal privacy is something that is not new to us. So we are very fam uh, familiar with this. So basically, uh, someone should not intrude or violate your personal space. And if someone is doing that or trying to violate your personal space, then basically you may also lose your personal privacy, okay? So uh, the other type of privacy is what we call informational privacy. So it concerns 
um, the protection of unauthorized access to information itself. So, for example, if someone is hacking your, let's say, social media account, then basically um, someone is, you know, trying to access your personal or informational in, uh, uh, information without any authorization from you as the owner of that account. So information such as personal information, financial information, medical information, and internet. So for example, no one should know about uh, your um, personal information. Like if you don't want to share your, let's say, any private photos, all right, uh, that you have uploaded. Say so for example, in your uh, social media account, then no one should be able to access that without your permission. And of course, for financial information, anything about your financial information, that should be secured. Most especially as well, the medical information. All right. And we also have what we call institutional privacy. So the research data, the sales and product data, the marketing strategies and the activities of the organization all need to be private. So for example, a, uh, an organization or a company when using the cyberspace, then uh, we should be able to, let's say if you, will, if you will be developing a system or an automated computerized system, you should make, make sure that the institutional privacy of that organization or that company is secured or are secured, okay? So that is something that we should, you know, always uh, take into consideration that whenever we develop a system or a computerized automated system, say for example, we, we should really secure uh, these data, such as, of course, we have already mentioned the institutional privacy if it's for an organization's um, use. All right. Uh, let's talk about the attributes of privacy. So we do have personal identity, autonomy, and social relationships. So personal identity is valuable because it enshrines personal privacy. We have already uh, discussed um, the definition of personal privacy. And then autonomy, the less personal information people have about an individual, the more autonomous that individual can be, especially in decision making. If you are uh, sharing, say, for example, a lot of information in your social media account, so it's like you're opening your uh, personal life into uh, those people who may also have access to those posts. So basically, um, that will also affect your uh, decision making. Okay, social relationships, uh, this involves norms and practice. So basically, it's, um, it's just referring to uh, the norms and practice that we should, you know, uh, we should always, we should always uh, do, or we should always observe rather whenever we use the, or we are in the cyberspace. Okay, so privacy concerns. Concerns about personal privacy existed long before the ad advent of computers and cyber technology, such as amount of personal information that can be collected. So for example, if you are using a or an automated system, then how many amount or how, how much data should be collected from the user, all right? Speed at which personal information can be transmitted from a location to another or uh, from your computer or from the user to the uh, to the database, for example. Duration of time that uh, the information can be retained. So if you have saved, let's say, some pieces of information, will it be saved temporarily or permanently? And when you delete that, say, for example, your picture in your social media account, will it be deleted from the database of that social media platform? All right. And uh, fourth is the kind of information that can be acquired and exchanged. So these are the four uh, main concerns, all right, when we talk about um, privacy, all right, in the cyberspace. So let's talk about privacy violations. Contributing factors or causes of violations are the following. First, this is very rampant most especially nowadays, all right? Consumers willingly 
um, consumers willingly give up information about themselves when they register at websites, shopping malls, in order to win prizes, and in mailing solic uh, solicitations. Consumers lack the knowledge of how what they consider a little bit of information can turn into a big invasion of privacy. Inadequate privacy policies, failure uh, of companies and institutions to follow their own privacy policies, internet temptation that enables businesses to reach individuals in a very short time in the privacy of their homes and office, offices. So these are, you know, the factors or causes of violations or uh, privacy violations. So we have to uh, really make sure that we do understand these in order for us to avoid violating privacy or avoid, you know, uh, doing these acts that will violate someone's privacy. Okay, and then uh, there are also other privacy violations when we talk about uh, the cyberspace. First is intrusion. Second is misuse of information. Third is interception of information. And fourth is information matching. So intrusion is an invasion of privacy by wrongful entry seizing or acquiring possession of the property of others so it's like doing a hacking act wherein you are able to you know enter such account or let's say for example uh, any um let's say network something like that then basically you should not do that of course in the first place knowing the fact that there a uh, fact that there is what we call cyber ethics and that is a this is a violation of the cyber ethics or the rules of uh the rules and regulations that we should follow in the cyberspace so misuse of information is uh or information is used for unauthorized purposes so for example whenever you gather a specific data and then you share it to anybody else. So for example, you share data to uh, someone or to an organization without the authority or uh, of the owners or owner of uh, that uh, or those data, then that should not be done. Okay, for example, if you have, let's say, acquired any picture and then you shared it, and you use it for any purposes that may damage anybody's or anyone's reputation, then you should not be doing that because that is to be considered as violations of the privacy of that person. Third is interception of information. This is what we call the unauthorized access to private information via eavesdropping. Uh, and lastly, we also have information matching. No limit to what one can do with the collected information so basically guys those are the other privacy violations that have been encountered or that may be encountered by you as well in the future so as it experts or future it experts we should be um, aware about these in order for us to not do such acts because again these are violations or privacy violations of um, a cyber user Okay, so let's um, move forward and talk about data mining and web mining. So data mining involves the indirect gathering of personal information through an analysis of implicit patterns discoverable in data. While on the other hand, web mining is the application of the data mining techniques to discover patterns from the web. So this is very ramp rampant nowadays. In order for those people to get data, um, basically, they wrongfully enter such uh, networks or such accounts, say for example, or uh, they do hacking. And then once they were successful doing those acts, then basically they may, you know, use those data that they mine. So uh, basically, this is like they consider it like um, a gold or uh, diamond uh, in in the cyberspace because they can use 
uh, or they can do a lot of things with the data that they will be able to gather like they can sell it in an organization or different with dif different organizations for um, business purposes and they of course they illegally you know acquired those data and again the these are still violations if you do uh, do uh, these acts illegally okay so basically that's it guys uh, for this module thank you so much for listening and i am hoping that i will be able to see each and every one of you um in the next discussion that we will uh, be having thank you so much and keep safe always